and it starts. Mine is closer. Wow. I wonder what that looks like live. because they know that I'm both a gamer and a fan. So they invited me to come and host the show. And I think this year is gonna be a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you're ready, because we're about to kick the press conference off. But before we do that, EA Play is more than just the show you're about to watch. Right behind these doors, there is a fan fest outside, and it is huge this year. It's a full three-day gaming festival where thousands of gamers can come and play games for free. Now, inside the theater here, there are hundreds of community members from all over the world who are going to be capturing, streaming, and getting their first impressions of the games that we're going to be showing off here today. But before we can get to that, we've got some reveals, of course. We're going to kick things off with a look at Battlefield 5 multiplayer. Now, I know Trevor Noah gave you the first look. Yeah, we can clap it up. Last month, but we've got some new stuff to show you today. Then we're gonna move on to FIFA 19, and boy, do they have some big news, you guys. Any World Cup fans? You guys excited? Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Then we've got two new indie games to share, and then I'm gonna come back towards the end of the show with some of my favorite developers to give you guys a nice, meaty look at Anthem. And of course, I like me. yeah, we got the woos for Anthem. I'm into it. You want, you want to do this with me? <laughs> well, wouldn't it be fun, you guys, if I killed you all the secrets at once, right? Well, give, give him a break. He needs to just enjoy the show. <laughs> so without further ado, let's get things started. Wow, she's a great choice, man. She's so natural. Yeah, Andre Renee is, uh, she's part of, uh, What's Good Games. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. If you don't, if you don't, aren't familiar with them, you should absolutely check them out. It's been exciting, it's been a lot of speculation, and so many brilliant remixes of a revealed trailer. But there's also been lots and lots of questions from the community. And we've heard you, you want to see more gameplay innovations. You want to know how customization actually works, and you want to know more about our take on the Second World War. So today, we'll show you more gameplay, and why this is the deepest and most immersive battlefield yet. It certainly is. You will be able to dive and smash through windows to surprise your enemies. Where previously defenses were stationary, you will now be able to move these weapons around on the battlefield and gain advantages. And our renowned destruction system is back and more impactful than ever. So, well, you can't really hide from those pesky tanks anymore as they come chasing you for you, as they rip through those buildings. And you will now be able to customize your soldiers, your vehicles, and your weapons, not only for the gameplay, but for the looks, as part of our portrayal of the Second World War. And that's just the tip of the iceberg in Battlefield 5. You're going to see a lot of our new gameplay systems. Yeah, I'm going to be giving my own little input here. I don't know if I can be so heard right now because I'm not recording this through OBS. Yes. Let's do that. But so we want to tell you this is like my Battlefield 1942. 
us excited to start with. Like Battlefield 1943 about, was kind of like. What you will see is really those moments of human heroism. Uh, I'm trying to look for the word here. The war through the eyes of the men and the women. It was like a Counter Strike Condition Zero. It was just an upgraded, real and, like different real and maps and stuff like that or whatever. And little, with the new we engine, Frostbite engine. Uh, so I'm hoping this is kind of like a true successor uh, the of Battlefield 1942 because I love that Xbox game. The beginning right, of the Battlefield franchise. So a launching October is just the beginning. You will all go on an expanding journey. In the dog fights in Battlefield 1942, no it was so fest. satisfying to kill no to bring power. down another <laughs> aircraft in a dog fight because it was difficult. Every day, With a lot of big we'll bring something airplane games out right now, like uh, journey, War Thunder, I played it, and it's nothing in comparison to for. the mm -hmm. combat in Battlefield 1942, it's the original. <laughs> It's, it's Royale reimagined for Battlefield. So we bring those pillars of Battlefield with destruction, team play, vehicles into this new experience. So we will bring you experience that you haven't played before in Battlefield or anywhere else. But more about that later this year. So with that, it's time to show you what makes Battlefield And the No so is doing an awful job with their audio here. And this time, it's even more epic, fighting across multiple maps and modes. Welcome to your next Battlefield experience, and this is your first look at ground operations. And this time, even featuring music. <laughs> I just got tore up by that freaking prop. So you gotta watch the Xbox conference tomorrow to get an in-depth look at it. I'm not really a big soccer fan, so I'm just gonna like talk through this for a second about Battlefield. And there were so many great expansion packs to the original Battlefield 1942, like Road to Rome. And my personal favorite was Secret Weapons of World War II. I wonder if we'll have something similar to that with Battlefield 5. Really, the only reason why I'm here is Anthem. I mean, there's really nothing that EA is doing right now. I mean, Battlefield 5 looks interesting to me. But there's really nothing uh, EA is bringing to the table in a long time that makes me want to purchase one of their titles. Hell, the last Madden game I think I owned was, uh, like, 2005 for the Xbox 360. 
being back in World War II will draw me back into the Battlefield and Before that, I played oh, a crap load of Madden NFL 2003. I was hoping Battlefield 1 would draw me in, just didn't quite, but I know that will. It was a good game. Also, they kept, you can see the kind of legacy of Bad Company in the destructibility of buildings, oh, yeah. you know? I wish I'd make another Bad Company. I know, we all do. But. That's the UEFA Champions League, the pinnacle of club football, where the world's best clubs compete and icons of the game like Gerard and Cruyff cemented their legacies. The world's biggest league joins the world's game. And a special thanks to the legendary Hans Zimmer and LA's own Vince Staples for collaborating with us on the trailer. And I really love the trailer because it captures our epic vision for how the Champions League comes to life in FIFA 19. And Lena's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. As Aaron said, the UEFA Champions League is an amazing addition for the game. It's where football's biggest heroes like Ronaldo and Neymar clash every year. And it's the place where champions rise. And you've been asking for this for a long time, and we are thrilled that it's here. And that's why we're bringing the Champions League across the game. There'll be an authentic Champions League tournament mode. Your club will chase this trophy in career mode. Alex Hunter will pursue Champions League glory in your story mode, the journey. And in FIFA Ultimate Team, there'll be live and authentic Champions League content. And we'll share more details on that along with all our other Ultimate Team features later this summer. And all that's just the beginning. As you know, the heart and soul of FIFA is gameplay. And My God. giving you the tools to control the pitch in every moment from your tactical approach to the match to each technical touch. And we know how passionate you are about gameplay, so we've worked hard to shape and refine our vision for FIFA 19 with input from our community. From hands-on tests with beginners to detailed feedback sessions with FIFA pros. And we're gonna be sharing a lot more about gameplay throughout the summer, but what I can tell you right now is that the quality bar in gameplay was raised yet again this year. So we look forward to everybody experiencing the game on the hands-on sessions this week. And also, of course, we're extremely excited for everybody to play it when we launch on September 28th. And that's our FIFA 19 news headlined by the UEFA Champions League. But I just wanted to take a minute to pause and reflect. <laughs> Standing next to this trophy is a little bit surreal. You know, growing up, there's two iconic trophies that every young player dreams of winning. And for your club, it's this one, the pursuit of Champions League glory. But for your country, it's this trophy, the World Cup. And with the tournament starting in just five days, we're excited for the world to compete for it in FIFA 18. As you can imagine, all of us on the FIFA team can't wait for the start of the World Cup. And we want to celebrate with FIFA 18 players, which is why we've just updated the game with a free World Cup experience on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PS, PC, and Nintendo Switch. <laughs> but you can take Ronaldo and Portugal to their first World Cup victory. Or you can write your own story with some great nations who didn't qualify this year. Or you can make a crazy dream a reality for your home country <laughs> like mine, Iceland. Who would have thought that a nation of only 350,000 people would ever qualify? And you can feel their excitement. Apologies to any England fans in the room, that might still sting. <laughs> And Lena isn't the only one who's excited. FIFA 18 players are loving the World Cup experience so far. But we don't want to stop there. We want to invite everyone to come and join the celebration. So I'm pleased to announce that for a limited time, FIFA 18 complete with the entire World Cup experience is available for a free trial on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and on PC through Origin Access. Yeah, you can download and play the entire game right now for free. So to kick off the trial, we've got some so. of the world's biggest creators who are going to be playing live at the end of the show, representing their nations in a little mini World Cup tournament. And this summer will bring so much more for FIFA fans. Plenty of FIFA 18 content centered around the World Cup 
and will bring you all the details on FIFA 19. But in the meantime, let's all enjoy the World Cup. Thank you, and Al Vista! <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, I walked away and they're still in the FIFA freaking crap. Well, and great things like this is uh, easier to do because this is a very and re very regular annual franchise. Mm -hmm. yeah, so well, it's easier for them to take like the you know sales are going down on 18. Well, getting well, with all the marketing around the World Cup, why not tie into that? I mean, everyone's going to be really keyed into it, even people who are in the years after. Right. FIFA 19. You know, the FIFA community never rests. 20 million people from 60 countries playing in competitive leagues this year. Well, the FIFA team never rests either, bringing the Champions League and the World Cup That's an and so much number, other though. greatness to FIFA this year. We can't wait for you to experience it all. Um, we've got so much to do here today, but I want to welcome you to EA Play. It's our third EA Play and our second one in Hollywood, and we couldn't be more excited to have you with us to share all the games that we have to show you. We've got lots to do, but before we, get, before we move on, I'd like to share just a couple of things. The greatest disruption to the consumption of entertainment media in the last five years is the combination of streaming plus subscription. As consumers, watching movies, watching TV, listening to music, reading books has never been easier. And we believe that disruption is going to be a pro have a profound impact on our industry in the next few years. And so over the last couple of weeks, you will have seen that we announced a new team from Israel has joined Electronic Arts to help our investment to extend our thinking and extend our pioneering into this cloud gaming world. For many people, that's going to mean extending the experiences they already play on our partner platforms. For others, it's going to mean new games and new modalities of play across a whole variety of platforms. But for everyone, it's going to mean playing games, anywhere, anytime. So this week we've got a tech demo running. Um, all of our games streaming in HD from the cloud to multiple devices that you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Now it's not quite ready for full market prime time yet, but it is a promise of what we hope to bring you in the future. The second part of that, of course, is subscription. And we started subscription a number of years ago, and many millions of you have signed up and experienced the joy of being able to have full access to a great catalog of games. Today, we're announcing Origin Access Premiere. So three things you need to know about it. Origin Access Premiere will bring you all of our new PC games, starting with Madden NFL, back on the PC for the first time in over a decade. Then FIFA 19, Battlefield 5, and of course Anthem. And there'll be many more titles in the years to come. Second, you get access to The Vault, our library of over 100 games from EA and other publishers. And third, it will launch later this summer. So that's a little later in the year, but if you want to get started right now and experience the benefits and joys of subscription, come in and play a free trial of Origin Access, our base subscription, this weekend. Thank you and have a great show. They seem to bring the origin a little more front and center this year. Yes, they definitely make sure they're there too. Yeah, it was in the FIFA announcement. I just want to say real quick, Madden on PC I'm actually pretty excited about. It would be great if there was a mode where you could let the game play itself so that you could just run like a manager season. I, I, I've always liked that about PC sports games. It seems to be left out of consoles these days. I think they, I think they have that now. Yeah, they yeah. seeing new games. I mean, someone's super excited about that man on PC, right? Yeah! 
So, um, you, you guys may have seen yep. that uh, Vince was is. tweeting yesterday, and there has been a bunch of speculation. So, uh, well, you want to just get right to it? Sure. I mean, we're not ready to show all of our stuff yet. We're working on a bunch of stuff. It's amazing. The teams are kicking ass. But we wanted to bring a little tidbit. So we've been working with Lucas on Lucas. getting the name and kind of the setting for what our Star Wars game is going to be. And we're going to talk about it right now. Oh, you guys got any guesses? I bet you the, the internet is going wild right now. I hope so. <laughs> uh, so the Star Wars name is Jedi Fallen Order. Woo! So Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. Is it so going to be PC with ray trace technology? Playing a Jedi. Uh, right. So does that mean I get to like hold a lightsaber? <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> In a Star Wars game? So Vince, you got a, you got anything else? Well, it takes place during the dark times. Trying to be a little vague here, but when the Jedi's are being hunted, so. It's going to be a spectacular. So for all the the, like, the hardcore nerds out there who want to know, like, where in the timeline, like, like, what between I which episodes so. is it? There you go, bro. Between three and four. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, between three question. and four. Love it. That sounds we're like a nice it. time. You got it, uh, any other tidbits? No? It's not a nice. It's a dark time. It's a dark time. <laughs> Bad time. Does that mean it's going to just be all dark and serious? It's amazing. <laughs> 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 All right, so I think people happening? are now anxiously want to know, like, what, when can we play the game? Uh, it will be holiday of next year, 2019, not this year. <laughs> but, sorry to dash any hopes. They're not going to show anything, though? But now that we that know, we like can set not. expectations. Yeah. We're all going to be amped up. And uh, hopefully we'll hear her more from you maybe, uh, maybe next year. They're not going to make holiday oh, 19 yeah. then. Well, it's thanks. only a year and a half away. <laughs> it was great to see you. Thanks for stopping by the show today. Do it have something to show. Uh, we do have a little bit more news on Star Wars, so I'm going to toss it over to Dennis. That's awesome. I don't know if I'd want a, like a cinematic non-gameplay trailer of another Star Wars thing at this point, though. No? Hello there. My name is Dennis. I work at DICE in Stockholm on Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm really happy and excited to be here today, so thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little bit. So we launched our game in November of last year, mm -hmm. and clearly we didn't get it quite right. So instead of coming out of the gate sprinting wow. like we really wanted to, we had to take a step back and make sure that we were delivering the game that our players really wanted. So we decided to completely overhaul our progression system and add a bunch of new character cosmetics for players to collect instead. So from there, we added a new hunt mode inspired by the original Battlefront games that I loved personally, starting with the Ewoks on Endor. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you. Uh, one, we, one, um, it turned out to be by far the most popular update of the game, and the team loved building Ewok hunts. Are they just looping the trailer? The so, as you might know, we're yeah, currently so in our Han Solo season with content <laughs> from the movie coming next week. It's headlined by the new planet Kessel, a really dangerous place, and it features the return of one of our favorite modes, Extraction. So looking forward a little bit, this summer we will be introducing a new squad system to the game, which will allow you to team up much easier and play with your friends. We're also adding a new Starfighter mode focused around dogfighting with your hero ships. And looking ahead a little bit more, we will also be delivering a new large-scale multiplayer sandbox experience focused yeah. around capturing command posts and attacking and taking out capital ships. But that's not all. We know that you have been asking for new heroes, villains, and planets from a certain era that features a very iconic Star Wars conflict. So I'm excited to confirm that Battlefront 2 this year will be going deep into the Clone Wars. It's only fitting that we begin on the planet Geonosis featuring multiple levels including the largest level we have ever built for Battlefront. So let's talk about the heroes and villains. First, let me introduce the most powerful droid, <laughs> the leader of the most powerful droid army in the galaxy, <laughs> General Grievous. 
And yes, he will be going up against my own personal favorite, Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Finally making his debut in Battlefront after all these years. So, but we're, we're, we're not done, that's not yeah. it. They will not come alone. Joining them is the Dark Lord and leader of the Separatist Alliance, Count Dooku as well as someone to bring balance to the Force, Obi-Wan's unruly Padawan, Anakin Skywalker. You really get all those like issues. I found one great, especially Ian McGregor. The team at home yeah. is extremely sure excited to be building I'm all sure of these cool things. Happen. EA and DICE are committed to Battlefront. We had a rough start, but I really think that this game has a bright future. Thank you very much for playing the game, providing us with your feedback, talking to us. Together, we will make this is the greatest game that we can possibly build. There would be no Battlefront without you. So thank you, may the force be with you, and enjoy the rest of E3. Thanks. Say whatever you want to about EA and the Battlefront and the way it launched. They've been exceptionally humble about their approach to it yeah. after all that initial outreach. Yeah. It's difficult to acknowledge when you messed up but they have absolutely been doing that. Oh! Oh my god. So cute. A hundred balls of yarn fall on an island. You have to hunt for needles and scissors. <laughs> Hi, it's it's really good to see you. Uh, in Unravel, I love we used I yarn yeah. to symbolize <laughs> love and the bonds between people. In our new game, we we tear that bond up right at the start. You lose everything, including your spark. But when things are at their darkest, you find hope. And you form a new bond. And your spark is rekindled. And it leads you off on an adventure. I'm loving this. So welcome to Unravel 2. It's a game about fresh starts and second chances. These two little souls who refuse to give up and who build something new and beautiful together. This dude's nails are painted. The whole game is inspired by that spirit of optimism and togetherness. You see, it's all made to be played with two characters. You can play it alone or you can play it in co-op with a friend, but there's always two characters there sharing one yarn and working together to get through this adventure. This game, it's quite different from the first. It's, it's both friendlier and more challenging, but above all, it's a lot more playful. And, and we think it's a worthy successor. And I want to show it to you now, so I, I brought some help. Uh, so please m welcome Michael to the stage. So our producer at Coldwood. And we're going to try to show you a little bit of what I'm talking about, about how you can play the game in, in co-op with yourself, essentially. <laughs> so this wasn't prepared? <laughs> there we are. <laughs> well, it shows that they're doing it. Yeah, it shows they're doing it. So when you're playing it by yourself, you can essentially pick up the other character and carry them along through oh, the cool. more fast-paced segments of the game. And we actually tried to include a bit more of those, <laughs> because we figured that since it's a oh, co-op game, a we wanted to have more like thrill and danger and kind of wow moments. Uh, places that were like fun and exciting. And then when you get to the more puzzly areas like this, when you're problem solving, you can split apart 
between the two and switch back and forth between the two characters because that's how we've essentially designed all the problems and puzzles of the game that you're always working together and helping each other out and utilizing this bond between you to overcome any obstacle that you come across. It's one person controlling both characters. Well, you can merge them together. So I guess I'll, I'll, I'll jump in at this guy, come you and Like there was a character who was red so, and blue? Um, yeah. I'm gonna be the re red one. Okay. I'll be the blue one. Okay, now they're both playing. So you can play both, mm -hmm. yeah. but you can also do co-op. Celebra right. Celebratory flip there. The boy, Henry. You know what I'm yeah, reminded of watching this is that really great Xbox and Pen game called Brothers. That, that's Sons. exactly what I was thinking of. Yeah, and Wait, this is, yeah, yeah. great game. It's like a, this right. feels like a combo between that and Limbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'll catch you. One thing I really enjoy about Here these games, the first Unravel, but um, also there's a, a VR game okay. called Moss, on. is these games where you're tiny. Uh -huh. They're, I really think the, uh, like exploring the scale of things okay, is cool. This is the like all these little tiny things that we don't think about yeah. are epic tools for them. Got it. Oh, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, sweet. Well done. Okay, I'll, I'll go up and distract the grass. You can, I'll sneak up here. Someone in chat called it Tomb Raider Yarn Edition. <laughs> okay, your, your turn. Yeah, look at me. <laughs> here you are. Keep, no, keep him over to the left. <laughs> now I'll go. Tricky really has a hard on for yarn. <laughs> <laughs> Try to build a nest, maybe. Who knows? No, I can't stop picturing turkey hard on. <laughs> that sounds like your problem. Yeah, right. I think that's what they were going for. That's what they're hoping. Yeah, we can breathe again. Yeah, finally. Or tell me. Slow mo. So that's, a, that's a quick little look at uh, Unravel 2. Uh, yeah, it looks fun. Yeah, looks like a fun game. Yeah, Jeez. I, I, I really hope you like it. And um, before I go, I just want to send some, some love to the team back home because working on this game has been an, a, a completely amazing team effort in so many levels, and everybody has worked so hard. So there, there's a bunch of us from Coldwood here, and, and thank you to those, and thank you to everybody back home, and thank you. Love you. Man. I love oh, the cool. Joseph Marchand and chat saying it's a thanks killing turkey. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of repeated imagery yeah. in this presentation oh, today. It was really baffling in the Star Wars section. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't like, make a lot of sense. Like right. The first one unraveled. Did any of you guys play that? Maybe yeah. zipper was open. Uh, I really enjoyed it, but felt like it had potential to be more. This seems like it could really help its like find its seat. Yeah. Like if you, I was brothers on just Xbox or was it on PlayStation as well? I played it on Xbox. I played it on Xbox. Uh, but if you get a chance to play Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, I think it would still hold up today. It was even like a little lo-fi from when it came out. Yeah, difference being, um, it is single player. Mm -hmm. uh, you did, but you also you had to share the controller. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Remember, I remember the two of you sitting, each using half of the controller. Mm-hmm. It looks like a really pretty game. It's it got fun. a really great art art style. Team at Coldwood, the great, the game is really strong. These guys have done an amazing job, and it's clear that they have a lot of passion. And I can't personally wait to play Unravel 2 with my kids. But what's even more amazing is that we will make Unravel 2 available to everyone today. Yep. Oh, you yeah. that right. Yay. Awesome. You'll be able to take these two yarnies on their next big adventure starting today. The game is finished. Like it's out. Yep. That's amazing. That's right. Great. Also shows you're better off watching it through your phone. Right. Yeah, you know, you like it. Yeah. Thank you to the team at Coldplay. Back in 2015, we started on this journey with the original Unravel. 
to seek out the most creative independent developers and bring them into our EA Originals program. It's been our way of helping these creators bring their unique games to the world and to tell their stories. And last year, if you remember, Joseph Fares was up here on stage representing his team at Hazelight and The Way Out. And I think we all kind of remember that. Um, and you might even remember him from the Game Awards as well. I think I did. <laughs> Anyhow, in March, that game caught fire. It's, it was in it, it's innovative, it's fun, and it's something fresh and new. And you all loved it. We saw over two million players in the first two weeks. And A Way Out is such a huge success that Joseph and his team are expanding and moving into a new studio. So stories like this drive our industry, and it's why we will continue to work with independent developers to help them realize their dreams. Which leads us to our next EA Originals title, from a little game studio in Berlin called Joe My Games. When I met this team and I saw the game, I was instantly drawn to how personal this story was. It's one that tower carries a very powerful and important message, and it's unlike anything we have ever done. So please welcome Connie Gepper to the stage from Joe My Games to tell you more about Sea of Solitude. Oceans are hot. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> oh I still remember um, during the pitch how enthusiastic Patrick was and that afterwards like our whole team, including me, were super excited. It actually feels a little bit the same right now. <laughs> I'm pretty excited, maybe a little too excited. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> right, come on. She's so cute! Yeah, if you're not used to talking in front of an audience, you're no, no, yeah. Oh. We are Yumai, uh, a small indie game studio from Berlin, and we are developing Sea of Solitude, or SOS as we call it. The whole journey from the very first concept to actually becoming a part of EA Originals is simply amazing. Let me tell you more about our game. When humans get too lonely, they turn into monsters. This is at the core of everything you will see, hear, and hopefully feel while playing SOS. What makes this underlying concept so important and so unique is that nearly Every human being can at least somehow relate to or remember the feeling of being lonely. In my case, I started writing the story when I felt the loneliest in my life. I think as an artist, you process your emotional world by letting it out uh, and putting it into your art. Um, I'm still amazed how like, the concept seems to just float out of me, like uh, right into the hand and onto the paper. I think. This is also why so many people can instantly So far, EA, you are not, it's not doing well story, at E3. That it takes place in a fantastic setting. Because this chick in is SMS, killing me right now. I'm we sorry. We to show how people experience different kinds of loneliness, but also how outsiders, friends, and family see those who struggle. We achieve all this in playful ways so that players who wants to simply enjoy a fantastic experience can do so. But player who wants to look a bit deeper can reveal right, a whole yeah. emotional world beneath it all. Sea of Solitude is about a young woman named Kay who is suffering from such strong loneliness that her inner feeling, the darkness, the anger, the hopelessness, worthlessness, turns to the outside and she becomes a monster. The game is about finding out why this happened to her, but also how to turn her back into a human. Ultimately, the goal is to bring all those emotions into balance. Some needs to become bigger, some would be better off a little smaller, but to embrace even your destructive part or your self-doubt in the same way you embrace your joy or your hope. This is what being human is all about. And that's 
what our game is all about. Thank you. Is this Even real? real? That was freaky. This world that I live in is empty and cold. The loneliness cuts me and tortures my soul. I'm no child of destiny and no fortune son. I've just chased you so long now. I'm too weak to run. A new day. This game is looking interesting enough to where I need to start paying attention yeah. to it. Especially the main character. I feel like I get more out of having seen some of the gameplay as well. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a, this is like a corporate yeah. adventure game. Yeah. Um, but I come away from that feeling that there's really many environments, I feel. We have seen one. Right. Like maybe it's like Metroidvania style where you have an area you're just unlocking portions of. Instagram story feed there? Just remember, <laughs> or Instagram live? Wherever you call home, whatever you fit, or however you fall, you are my court. I don't know what this game's about. And this is my squad. Hey, under basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> Hundred LeBrons versus one Steph Curry. My name's Shay Kiblin, aka Young Kiv. I'm from Seattle, Washington. The only goal of mine is really to win the Madden Cup. Kiv's been going after that belt since 2016. At some point, he's going to need to get out of this quarterfinal and claim a major. It's a big night for Young Kiv. He's been stuck at the quarterfinals. And here he is now in his first championship game, looking to accomplish a goal. Third and four, throws it low. T. Washington. That was a phenomenal read, and Trini's got. So recovered from that butt whooping? Wow, already started. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Juju Smith Schuster from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, um, as you guys can see, king of touchdown celebrations. That's pretty fire. I like that a lot. Um, as you guys know, this is Young Kid, Madden 18, Madden champion. Like, give it up, Young Kid, y'all. Give it up. <laughs> young Kid. How has it been, you know, your success and your path, you know, to where you're at today? It's, uh, I've always been a competitor. Um, when I was in high school, I was playing baseball, I hurt my arm. So then I picked up Madden and at first I was really bad. I was getting blown out online, but I kept at it. I put more and more time into it. Eventually I made my first tournament, but I had a big decision. It was the same time as my graduation. Wow, okay. So the key to be <laughs> the number one, Player in Madden, so like baseball. <laughs> <laughs> number, one. number two, you said you had the decision to, be to, uh, to go to your graduation or go to a tournament. So, like, what did you do? I chased that money. I still got my diploma, but I chased that money. <laughs> there you go. We're out here chasing money. <laughs> wow. 
That's awesome. Okay, now the past two, you know, <laughs> the past two years. Stupid? No, it always happens. I know you have some ups and downs. Years and it's, it's just overly really scripted, I think. It's all scripted. devastating losses. I've been so close so many times. I made the final on TV and got blown out by all those losses. It made me gain a lot of mental toughness, and that's why I got this belt. That's awesome. I, that belt is that's so amazing. There's a lot of, you know, bling on that so belt for you. <laughs> it's like the wardrobe well, was provided today, by Steve Marketplace. Play, you know, <laughs> first look at the Madden 19 trailer. Super excited. It's going to be so fun. It's lit. I honestly wish I can stay right here and talk to you guys forever, but I'm not going to board you guys. We're going to go out. I'm going to try to take this belt, you know, round two. So we're out. Have a good day. 100 John Madden. <laughs> We keep making that joke, but there aren't that many battle royale announcements. Your whole life to get to moments yeah. like we lived yes. the game. We lived EA with one. With it is true. The first, first conference. The top of the mountain. First, first title. They haven't, they haven't pivoted Anthem yet. Battle through the pain and failure, all just to get to this place where you've been told legends are born. You fall so you can rise. And you rise so that you can truly see. See that it was really never about reaching the end of the road at all. I just want to know, can I be But about all the moments that... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. It's down on the D-pad. So, you were in their position... Let the moment define you, or will you define the moment? I think it's interesting that they moved Madden to the Frostbite engine. It seems like they're really unifying mm -hmm. everything across all their different divisions onto onto that engine. Also, keep pushing the esports angle of their sports games, and it's just like I just don't see that as major push in esports. Mm. Michael Martinez, how you doing today? I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, we're gonna do this presentation a little bit differently and give you your first look at a brand new mobile game in a live winner-take-all head-to-head match. Well, Michael, why don't you tell us the rules? Here for. Sure thing. The objective is straightforward: destroy the opponent's base to win. Unit control, super simple. Just tap it, tap for destination, unit automatically moves there. The most efficient way to destroy the opponent's base is with this giant nuclear missile in the center of the map. Control the missile by standing on a majority of the control points. A bar fills up while the missile is possessed. Whoever controls the missile when the bar fills up will fire the missile. It takes two missiles to destroy the enemy's base and win. That's it. Sounds great, Michael. Well, enough talking about it. Let's let's get to this match. Absolutely. Oh, missile. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have an awesome matchup lined up for you here today. Fighting for the blue side of the room. If you could please give a cheer for one of the most formidable RTS players there is. Make some noise for In Control. Ooh. Yes. Uh, audience, does not sound energetic. No. His opponent <laughs> fighting for the red side of the room. A competitive mobile gaming phenomenon. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Nick at Night. I'm going to say All you hear is the announcer's no, clapping. Explain what the game is. Yeah, should be a great match. Really there really is. Right. All right. Are the players ready? Let's uh, get this thing going. Ready to go. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. Let's kick this off. Uh, Nice little strategy game for those yes. of you out so there. Excited. It's a good genre. I like they brought them I'm out. I'm very excited for this. The players are I mean, really in to and we're show ready to how difficult this is to play. My golf. They're literally the sitting in the dark. have been deployed and the action begins like any strategy game. Mm -hmm. Economy will be the focus. We right. have Typical round last 45 minutes. Let's see how this goes. Too crazy. Now the infantry is going to come out to hold that top point. Both players, of course, trying to take that position. Nick and Knight being able to reach it a little bit first in a strategy game. That flank position that in control is going from the top side. Also very important as Nick and Knight's forces have to circle around the Kelly center. Kelly Roberts, Kenny right, Chad is asking, is this command and conquer? Like right, I saw when I wonder what, what IP with, uh, is this based on when I saw it because it's EA, you know? And right. For the yeah. I think like it's just strategy game, the units that you're a new or generic. Yeah. 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 Y
the leverage from the ones that they've got that they're not using. Yep. Pick a night with some attack bikes in the top. Defense. There he is. And in control placing the turret on the top right side to help cover that rhino. It's interesting though, it looks like a cross between RTS and strategy a little bit, like turn-based strategy. A little bit, yeah, because it's got locked positions, but it's real time. To hold those control zones. Right, and in control making a lot of progress to that far right side of the map. And he's done a great job of holding that down with the turret, and now he's redeploying his vehicles to the south side, bringing out more infantry to deal with the attack bikes. And as that economy ramps up, of course, we're seeing bigger, more powerful yeah. units come no. out. We so have that pressure. drill pod coming in yes. the left so side. Yeah, there's pressure. Those flamethrowers, right, absolutely. Again, those are going to tear through those infantry. Yeah, and in control, brings out his first tank. That's going to be used to try and help push back these smaller forces as he makes his way to the south side. That missile passing halfway now. Yeah, Bolton knows who's under okay. control of Nick at night. He will have the missile. We see it starts to point yeah, towards in control. Bizarre choices at this press conference. Let's see. Yeah. In control can get around to that top corner, able to halt that missile. Keeping in mind, too, we haven't yet seen. Missile, put it into the yellow position. Well, very important, of course, the, the pathing of Do you get an extra missile if you connect to Facebook? Is that, is that so can you do that? Go <laughs> wait for that part of this presentation. Share it with your friends. You can fight five friends. This missile is very, very close to firing. Let's see what's going to happen. With another turret in control, place, he takes the top of that missile. And then fires. fires. Wow. There's two missiles, right? Yep. One shot away from being knocked out here as the next one will start to ready up in just a moment's time. It controls very heady artillery. I'm on the edge of my seat. Are you on the edge of your seat? I love this game. <laughs> I will definitely give this game a shot, but this is an odd choice for a live presentation. Like a 30 second. Uh, yeah, there, also an available now, go get it kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh, by the way, as someone just pointed out to me here, that's definitely Tiberium up at the top of the screen. Oh, yeah. That sucks. I'd rather just have a real random tracker. I mean, it's not definitely type of thing, but... There's a harvester on the left. Yeah, if it's a command and conquer, they would have called that out. Maybe it's like a... Maybe they're waiting to do their big old mic drop. Like, it's command and conquer, and it's available right now. Shout out to Adam Baird with the eagle eyes. Be nice if, uh... If I was picking a command and conquer game to port to mobile, it would be generals for me there. Absolutely. Nick at night, cruising around, thinking about harassing those harvesters, coming around the far side for those rhinos. Looks like he's really pressing it. And we see that missile is starting to get close to firing with three zones in control for Nick and Knight, looking to set things back the other way. In control, trying to rally his force. There's a lot of time in this briefing to devote to this game. Especially if, yeah, Red's going to fire, I think the MNL has to shoot. We can talk all day, have a real time. Rip, and this is what watch off of this missile. And Nick and Nick are going to fire that one off and settle right. for next missile is going to end him. in. Next missile wins. Let's see what happens. Boom goes the dynamite. Control the Wolverines, as you pointed out, for in control coming out to try and deal with these forces. But uh, Nick and Knight's in a great job of getting map presence and now also harassing the economy of there control. Yep, wow. Okay, we've got our first mammoth tank on the board. It's well, it does seem to be limited to a certain amount of time because the missile damage. progresses that at its own rate and it's whoever owns the control points. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, it's got in. a lot of range, that big boy, and in control just needs to hold This it. missile is nearly going to fire. It can be stolen at any point. Where is it going to go? Is he going to be able to get it off? He's got it back. There it is! He's going to take it. Defeating Nick and Nick here. What a victory. Amazing. Well, that's a word. What a map. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was awesome. Any thoughts, guys? I just came to make mammoth tanks, so I, I've done my job. Yeah, absolutely. That was Thank awesome. So we saw a little bit of everything right there. Perfect. Yeah. Let's hear it for Nathanius, Nick and Knight, and In Control. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you just saw was the worldwide reveal of Command and Conquer Rivals. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, good call, Gus. Well, it was yeah. totally, uh, totally got help on that one. For mobile. We're giving players complete, continuous control of their armies in quick, competitive, head-to-head -head matches that are fueled by skill and strategy. Now, Rivals will be coming to iOS and Android company. devices, that's, but I'm excited to announce that Android like players can play the pre-alpha today. So head to the Google Play Store, search Command & Conquer Rivals. The studio has been having an absolute blast playing this game, and we can't wait for you to play. Please let us know what you think. Thank you. If, they, if the last 30 seconds of what they just did was the entire presentation, it would have been a much bigger deal. Yeah. I agree. Here's Command & Conquer coming to mobile. It's available today. Here's what it looks like. Yeah.
think just a cut down so, to that round. A cut down to that match would be fine. Where's the, Where's the celebrity to promote this? I'm available, EA. <laughs> I was probably still trying to do Wow. That's exactly what the gameplay looked like. Command and conquer for a new generation. Now, before we close the show with a spectacular epic anthem, I wanted to share a few final things. So I am blessed five minutes left. to be able to work Damn. with some of the most creative people on the planet who come to work every day to create amazing entertainment. And what I can say about all of those teams and what I can say about us is that we are always trying to learn and listen and strive to be better. And so as you look at the 10 experiences that you're going to see today and as you My God. Games this week, all right, here we go, Anthem. Hope come through. First, that at the very core is choice is that you as players get to choose how you play, what you play, when you play, and what devices you play on. That in making those choices, you feel you are treated fairly. That no one is given an unfair advantage or disadvantage for how they choose to play. That for every moment that you invest, we know that you put so much of your life into the games we make, and that for every moment that you invest, you feel like you are rewarded and you are given value for that investment. And most importantly, that the games are fun, that we move past the grind, and that these are experiences that truly enhance your lives. And so, as we think through all the things that we're trying to do, know enhance your life with the video and game. We want to make great games. Okay. And that as much as we love making it's games, entertainment, man. And as much as you love playing them, there's something that is even greater that we can do together. The power of this community when we come together to do amazing things is profound. Last weekend was the third year of our Play to Give program where we show the world how the power of play this can anthem be trailer is going to be super short impact. millions of you out there participated in nine in-game challenges in our games logging millions of hours in support of play to give and to celebrate that we contributed a total of one million dollars to three charities that share our vision for a more inclusive world a world where representation and equality are not something we strive for, they are the standards. And where bullying and exclusion are not an everyday threat. These three organizations, the United Nations, he for she, PACE's National Bullying Prevention Center, and Ditch the Label, an anti-bullying organization, all are doing great work, and we're proud to support them through Play to Give. That, and thank you for your support. Thousands of us at EA and millions of you together doing immeasurable good because we love games. Thanks for being with us and thanks for the incredible privilege of making games for all of you. Now without further ado, let's take a look at Anthem. This gate player is going to be angry. The gods vanished and left our world in chaos, creating altering, destroying. The anthem is all that remains. There's a storm coming. These walls can't protect us forever.
my god, that was awful. It was music. I heard you, you misspoke. A little bit of gameplay there, the Marines. Awful presentation. So it did say at the top and it was all in-game footage. Wow. Yeah. Did it say in-game or game engine? Game engine, game engine. Yeah, that's not the same. Not gameplay. How cool was that trailer? You guys have seen it a couple times and it's so cool every time I see it. So I know all of you, like me, have had tons of questions about Anthem since last year because we're all Bioware fans. So we're going to do something a little bit different for the rest of the show, and we're going to take a deep dive into Anthem. So I'm going to bring up some members of the Bioware team to chat with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Casey Hudson, Mark Dara, and Kathleen Rutzard. Well, Anthem Q&A. Yeah, this is a weird. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll approach get some to presentation. Yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming out today. Just yeah. Got a little game to show, right? Yep. It's going to be very exciting. So, Casey, we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and get started with you. So, now we know that Question you all started, or Casey, you started your career at BioWare way back in the day. Then you yep. took a couple years off. But before you came back, you actually worked on Anthem before you left. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, you know, first of all, it's amazing to be back. It's awesome to be making games for Bioware fans. You know, we have the best fans. Uh, so it's been super satisfying to come back to it. And, you know, I just want to be able to continue the legacy of the studio. And that's kind of where it started with Anthem, is just thinking about, you know, what is the evolution of a Bioware game? And we wanted to create a brand new world for people to discover, you know, a whole new world of story and character. But we also wanted to do something that was, you know, more of a dynamic and living world, a game that would change every time you came back and played it. And we also wanted to do something where, you know, if you wanted to invite your friends into it, then you could do that as well. So that was really the initial vision of the game, not an MMO, not a multiplayer game with stories sort of bolted on this side, but something new and different, and I think the team has really captured that vision over the years. Your fans really love the stories from Bioware, but I think we're kind of curious how you're planning to make story work in this shared world. So a great story for Bioware is really about characters that you can have a connection with, um, choices you get to make, and feeling like the story is about you. In a lot of multiplayer games, those things get diluted because you're mixing multiplayer and storytelling into the same areas. Now you can build a solution to that, but you have to really build it into the core of the game. And that's what we've tried to do with, with Anthem. It's what we call our world, my story. So when you're out in the open world, the world is really dangerous and you're focused on your mission. And this is where other players get to play with you. The thing that's really interesting about this, it's unique for, uh, for Anthem, is that this is a living shared world. So whether there's weather or uh, it's nighttime, what we're experiencing, we're experiencing together. Everyone that's playing Anthem at a, at a, at a moment is seeing the same thing. And this is what we mean when we talk about our world. It's a, it's a shared world that we all experience together. But then when I finish my mission, I come back to a base like Fort Tarsus. And this is a single player experience. I turn in my, my uh, rewards, I talk to some characters, I experience the choices of my action. And this is where your story really lives and breathes. And by doing it this way, we are, we're able to combine that impact and agency of a single player story with the fun of teaming up with your friends to play co-op in combat. And we're also designing it so that we can add story for years to come. So one of the first things that we hear when, um, from our community is they want to continue to play in our worlds when they've finished Mass Effect or Dragon Age. Players want more story. And so we've designed it in a way that we can actually add more story for years to come. And it could be anything. A new moment with a character that you've grown to love, or uh, to see other players, an event like in the world that's deep whatever. into the lore, or uh, an entirely new storyline and plot. Well, I'm certainly not going to complain about more story. I don't think anybody out there is going to either. So, Kathleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, from a writing perspective, since you are the lead writer, can you speak to what it's like to create a new world like Anthem from the beginning? Well, what's really exciting for us, um, and not just the writers, but all of the, the devs, the designers, the artists, is that we're creating something new and mysterious for players to discover. 
So at the heart of the premise of Anthem is a world left unfinished by the gods. But the gods left behind their massive tools, and those tools are in constant conflict with this unknowable force called the Anthem of Creation. And the chaos of those things pushing against each other um, means that the world is constantly being reshaped in new and unpredictable ways. Yeah, violent storms, mutated creatures, gigantic monsters. It's a dangerous environment that you need to wear a suit of powered armor, a javelin, to, uh, to be safe in. Now, something I think a lot of players out there maybe don't stop to think about is just how much work goes into creating a new intellectual property or IP, as we've been saying. Now, you know, we've seen all these different creatures, and Mark, you mentioned the storms. What's the process of creating a game like from scratch? Yeah, it's something we've done a few times at BioWare. Um, you know, and really the hardest part is getting started, just kind of getting off the blank page. Uh, so what we try to do is we think about the new experiences that we're trying to unlock for players. So like, what is the fantasy fulfillment? What are the new things you actually get to go and do that are different from what you've played before? So that's where we start. And then once we think about those things, um, you know, that's the power of creating new IP, especially for games, is that you actually get to build a whole fictional universe that's meant to bring out a certain experience. And then once we do that, then we kind of, we still need to build all the rest of the stuff and what unlocks us creatively is to think about like principles around art style, tone, and even the technology and the politics of, of our new world. And then from there we can actually go and build out every last detail. Yeah, and one of the uh, unique challenges for Anthem is that it's a world, an experience that's meant to feel alive, like it's happening uh, right now. And so the world is always changing, um, weather, the uh, storms, Big uh, seasons, on here. and um, yeah, it's a really great concept to write for because what it means is it gives us the opportunity to drop into the world almost in real time a dramatic event that changes the world for everyone. And that could be anything from gameplay to lore. I mean, the, all of the moving parts year, in the yeah, dynamic totally. world sound really cool, okay. the way that they sound like they're going to come together. But yeah, even like, though there's obviously a lot going on, it really all comes back to footage. your Dude, character. I don't know what's going on. Too. So this let's is, talk about who we're going to be playing as and why we're fighting these crazy bees. So you are a freelancer, uniquely skilled to pilot these exo, these javelin <laughs> exo suits. And uh, you need those suits to survive and fight in this world because the world will kill you. Um, but on top of that, uh, our ancient rivals, the Dominion, have, uh, they've discovered a way they think to weaponize the anthem of creation. And so um, we need to stop them and protect the free people of Tarsus. Now, I've heard yeah, you call this too, power I'm armor a couple different things. Is it, is it a suit? Is it a javelin? Like, what's the, what's the canon term like here? We the call them javelins, I mean, and there are four. And uh, they each the have a vehicles, unique ability. The sparrows, there's the ranger. The same kind of thing. That's and then the there's like the it. colossus, the interceptor, and finally, the storm. Yeah, so uh, each javelin gives you a different way to play the game. Uh, but the thing to remember is, like Kathleen said, you're not your suit. You are a freelancer, a pilot, which means you can decide which suit you want to use based on your mood, based on the mission you want to engage in, or the, or the javelins that your friends are using. Um, so really what this allows us to do is we built the suits to look like they're built from the materials of the world. Uh, so they each have their own unique abilities. So let's take a look at uh, the Ranger now. The Ranger is a more generalized suit, uh, able to, uh, to do a lot of different things, uh, use, really designed for up close and personal combat, one-on-one uh, -on -one for the most part. The Colossus is heavier, more specialized, but able to really pack in big weapons that let them devastate the battlefield. I'm just going to say the storm looks like it's going to be my favorite. and I'm sure you guys out there are picking your faves right now, too. Um, so the javelins are awesome, but we're going to take a couple questions right now. So Casey tweeted, some of you may have seen, asking for uh, people out there to send us your questions. And the first one is going to be from at It's Sweet Nicole, who asks, as a player who is all about making their character their own, what kind of customization options will be available in Anthem? 
Yeah, so we really want p players to express themselves, both through customizing the way their, their uh, javelin plays, through gear and uh, weapons, but also being able to personalize the way that it looks, uh, both through paint jobs as well as changing the actual uh, geometry of the suit itself. Yeah. We want teams to be able to do this as well. That wasn't prescriptive, by the way. They just happen to have that yeah. piece of video footage ready. <laughs> we really want you to be able to make it your own. I'm glad you brought that up because actually, Jay Legato has a question connected to customization. <laughs> Monetization. How, when, loot box, cosmetics? Yeah, so we are going to have uh, some cosmetics and vanity items that you'll be able to purchase, but you're always going to know what you're going to buy before you uh, spend any money on it. So, so no, no loot box. boxes, no ability to pay for power. Yay. So that means... No ability to spend money on gameplay advantage at all within Anthem. But even more important than that, we want to make sure that Anthem is an immersive experience that feels like it's complete from the get-go. So that means a main story, a big open world, and an ongoing service that provides new content for a long period of time. New story, new, new, uh, new experiences for everyone. Well, I'm glad to hear that I can make my javelin pink. That's really all I wanted to know, I'm going to be honest. All right, Casey, we talked earlier about this being a co-op experience. So can you tell me a little bit about how the team gameplay in Anthem is going to work? Yeah, it, it really is about my you know, the fun of teaming up as, as a team of superheroes and working together. So um, you want to get a few people together of different classes. So, you know, I think here we're going to see the, the Colossus you know, just hammering people on the ground in gameplay, if we can have a look at that. So, heavy artillery, being really strong, you know, in melee combat. And then here you've got the ranger shooting down from above. And then they're using com you know, combos and special abilities and stuff like that. But what I love is you don't just run around, you're swimming and flying as well. So it's interesting because but Alex of the Slate yeah. Tones wants to know, how will you balance multiplayer with single player storytelling? So Anthem is really built around trying to combine the, uh, the impact of having your own personal story with the fun of playing with other players. But we really want to make sure that, uh, that playing with other people feels like a choice. So for people that want to just experience the story, we're, you're going to be able to do that. Now going out into an open world like this uh, by yourself is going to be a little bit more challenging than, uh, than if the team of four people. And we've really tried to balance the co-op experience to be fun even for people that don't normally engage in this kind of thing. So I really hope that everyone at least gives co-op a try. Okay, that's good to know. If you want to roll so solo, you can, there. but it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. Um, well, I know you all are on the edges of your seats. How about we show a little gameplay? Yeah? Yeah, what if you loop a whole bunch of it? I will. So, um, the, you and your friends have decided to play a mission called Scars and Villainy. The Scars have put together an acid-based super weapon, so you got to take them out. So, you start in the Strider, which is like a giant walker, and it's your forward base of operations. You have a conversation with your crew, Halleck, Faye, and Owen, and you'll hear Owen. He's going to talk us through the mission as we, as we experience it here. Um, and, yeah, then you just get into your javelin suit, and you head out with your friends. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark, Casey, Kathleen, for talking to me about Anthem today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and roll the gameplay now. Enjoy, everybody. Freelancer, time to get to work. They said these bastards made some kind of acid, been using it as a weapon. So, find where they're making this garbage and shut it all down. of scars nearby. Take a look around the area, but uh, be careful. There's something I really like about damage numbers. They feel kind of... I, I love those. It's also a good way to give you like, feedback right. when you're getting more Checking out the scar camp some more. Look at all those. 
weapons. Oh, and the, and the turrets. Better move quickly. I want to fly around so bad. That's cool. pieces of energy, they're echoes from the Anthem of Creation. Loads of scars nearby. Be careful. I love this. Return there to the wreck. You've got to silence it fast. I mean, you can look at the heads up display on the right. Uh, we're changing weapons, but then also the powers is they you have abilities that have a cooldown. Yeah. You know, like, apparently that sphere that throws everybody with that uh, area of effect. How do you guys feel about, like, the third person shooter instead of the first person shooter in a cell game? I'm fine. Wait, something's happening. I'm okay with it. I don't mind. What the hell was that? I think that was whatever laid all the eggs around here. The sound came from below your position. On the plus side, this definitely counts toward hazard pay. There's a train of this acid gunk leading down. Follow it, and we should find the source. It definitely feels like I'm watching the guests in strike, though. Yeah. Are there three people on team or four people? Four. There's four. Yeah. Sure, let's show the boss part. That looks cool, dude. Yep, and that was uh, that was actually just a short version of the full demo that we brought here to LA. So if you want to come by the Anthem Theater here at uh, EA Play, you can check out the game live. So I'm sure the question on everyone's minds: When do we get to play? So Anthem comes out February 22nd, 2019, on uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. So mark your well, calendars, everybody. Fire! Tweets. Thank you so much again to Casey and the entire so. Firework team. I know you guys have that awesome theater outside, so I will see you guys there. All right. Give it up for Casey Hutchins, everybody. I also want to give a big thank you to all of the developers who showcased their games today and everybody working hard at their studios back home around the world. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, some of what you saw today, you guys have to wait to play. But you guys, EA has so much available right oh, now. Now, for gone. those of you keeping score, Check you can get your February. free trial of FIFA 18's World Cup today. And Andrew told us about the free trial of Origin Access. Yarny is back with a buddy in Unravel 2, which is also available today. Plus, you can take on your friends in Command & Conquer Rivals starting today as well. Now, that's a lot of, a lot of available stuff yeah. that's out today. Is anybody ready to go home and download anything? No? You're like, I just want to go outside into the fan fest. I get it, I get it. So, uh, I want to let you guys know to keep your streams going because in just a few moments, the FIFA 18 World Cup Live Tournament is going to begin. I'm going to head outside and check out the games, but I want to thank everybody for coming down to EA Play today and watching the press conference, and have a great weekend. February is the new October. Well, not even the date they initially put out to, so they can push it to October later. Yeah. Wasn't Red Dead Redemption supposed to be out in the spring, initially? Yeah. Of 2018? Yeah. 
So October now is Call of Duty, Black Ops 4, Battlefield 5, and Red Dead Redemption 2. You know, Everything else pushed to, like, is either pushed forward to September or pushed to November because no one wants to compete with those three. Right. I tend to overanalyze things that they show in cinematic trailers. And for Battlefield 5, they, you know, they showed being able, specifically in-game, being able to move defenses. Yeah. They focused they, on that a lot. In the cinematic, they showed them building sandbag walls, which I thought was interesting. Right. They showed they had a close-up of a hammer. Yes. And then they cut to the sandbag walls as well, like building fortified positions. Yeah. Mm. You and I look for the same things, apparently. I just All right. Here. So that was the EA briefing. Engineer class for life. All, <laughs> all done. Good to finally have it. It's a Kovic. Sorry. Hey, Kovic. <laughs> so, you guys can't see him, but he's out screaming. He's really excited about Anthem. Uh, really excited. He's like running around screaming. So, impressions of the pre presentation overall? Um, excited that uh, Unravel 2 is not only announced, but out today. That's pretty. I'm going to go down. I always love that there. kind of stuff. Uh, I really enjoyed the first one. I thought 